Good morning, Bibliolauts and company. Uh, I am Greeks, among other things, and uh, today we are talking about the top 10 books ever, no, in 2023. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get to it, because I, I need to get going. Number 10 is The Writing Life. This is the one book I haven't read. Uh, I listened to it as an audiobook, because it was free in audible. It was super quick as well. I would listen to it as I was hiking to get my things. Um, in the swamp of uh, quick sandy frozen water in which I left it when I was escaping trying to save my life in Scotland. Um, so I went there the next day and as I hiked there I, I, I listened to this audiobook and it became my favorite, my new favorite book on writing. Uh, it, um, it, it, how is it debunked? Uh, it, uh, took the place of um, Zen in the Art of Writing by Rad Bribery, which is also an inspiration for my email uh, <laughs> name. So yeah, I mean, uh, amazing write book on writing, Annie Dillard is my discovery of the year, it's my baby, my love. Um, I You will see her further up, way further up in the list. So yeah, uh, The Writing Life, amazing book. Uh, also, just fucking write. Everything she says about writing is just write. Um, number nine is Sophocles' place. A hot take. I feel like the Greek tragedy is a lot more philosophically rich than Greek philosophy. Um, number eight, Anna Karenina. Not my favorite book. Not among my favorite books. The topic: a woman that cheats on her husband, a guy that's about to get married, but then can't, and then gets married to someone else, and just lives on the on a farm like n none of those are sort of like themes that uh, I tend to enjoy reading about but it's Tolstoy and this is probably the best book I have read in my life in terms of uh, how it's written in terms of its quality in terms of the reality of of the plot of its characters of the world that he creates Tolstoy is a world he he when he writes, he he doesn't just write; he builds reality ar around you, and uh, and you are um, surrounded by those characters in that world while you're reading. And Anna Karenina is a for me; it feels like it genuinely feels like a flawless book. And uh, also, I I like my own I like my philosophical um, having philosophical paragraphs here and there, reflections and poetic parts in which the author indulges a little bit more. But Tolstoy is very, he has um, an Aristotelian virtue uh, when it comes to writing that not many writers have, which is temperance. He knows, like, he will create a whole scene that builds up to this moment in which he gives you, like, a very short paragraph with a reflection that is just like a fucking bullet. And, uh, and then he doesn't continue <laughs> uh, for three pages, like most authors uh, that are not able to stop once they're like, oh my God, I had this idea. Let's just like make, write 10 pages of this. No, no, he's able to like, he gives it to you, implacable. And, and, and that's it. No need to continue. Move on. Uh, yeah, one of the few writers that I, when I read, when I read him, rather than, looking down at him, I look up to, uh, I'm like, okay, you know, if I have to aspire to be, uh, to write in a certain way, um, I much, uh, I'm, this is one of the very few people that I can aspire to that I don't feel like I could do it better than them, uh, yet. <laughs> uh, then we have number seven, my favorite book on reading, a very fun book, very fun. If you indulge on George Saunders' A Swimming Upon in the Rain, if you indulge him on his, um, exercise and do the things that he asks you to do it's very 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 fun to read it's very fun to do it's very uh, i it, it is, it's also a collection of russian stories short stories and of all kinds like they're very different from each other so only because of that it's a really nice collection that you want to have but if you also read them and do the exercises that he proposes you will improve as a, as a reader but also you will just enjoy you, it's it's I I had so much fun re uh, reading and, and and doing mainly because it, it it puts together my two favorite things which is reading and writing. So um, yeah, I I I just I mean that book is actually probably one of my favorite books ever. Uh, so there you go. 
Da, 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 da. I mean, from now on, it's pretty much all of these are some of my favorite books ever. Um, Solaris, um, science fiction as it should be written, uh, which is if you're trying to get an alien form of life, of cognition, made them truly alien. Uh, there's only one other uh, time that I've seen that done well, which was um, in the movie The Arrival, which I think is a really good movie that also respects uh, all non human forms of cognition and presents them in a truly non-anthropomorphic uh, way. And in this case, Solaris is an ocean, a notion that has uh, self-awareness. Although the characters are trying to figure that out, they're studying it. But as, as, they, as they study it, uh, the planet, the ocean, the, um, that thing that is uh, that definitely has some form of intelligence that is way beyond human understanding, is also studying them. But by trying to study them, it torments them with uh, hallucinations and things because it doesn't really understand yet human nature. Um, it's amazing. It's an amazing book. It's uh, incredibly um, f uh, philosophically rich, enjoyable. Um, some parts of the book are more interesting than others. I, I would have liked more explicit um, takes on, on that thing, on Solaris, and less on the relationships uh, of the characters with their own inner uh, worlds and, and minds and, and pasts, um, but I think it's uh, it's it's just it's just very well done. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, Stanis Lem, uh, I think that I think that's the name uh, of the of the author. Um, yeah, I mean he he definitely earned uh, my full respect uh, with this book. Uh, but if you don't agree, don't don't listen to me. Listen to Katie Books. He said it's the, his best book of the year. So I mean, if Katie Books says it, I think that's 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 enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there you go. Uh, that's Solaris. Uh, highly, 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 highly recommended. And uh, the next one is number five, and this is. The Consolations of Philosophy by Boethius. My favorite philosophical dialogue ever. One of my favorite, contains some of my favorite poems. Is this man who wrote uh, a lot and, and was incredibly influential uh, in his time. Um, being on a cell waiting to be executed. That's what's happening to him as an author, as a person. And while he's in that cell, he's visited by Mrs. Philosophy, the female embodiment of philosophy. And they have an argument, a long argument, talking about many different things. And uh, as they have this argument and this conversation, uh, what he's actually doing is talking himself into death um, through sort of like, you know, give, giving himself a pep talk through the mouthpiece of philosophy. Um, it's not a uh, crito from Plato. It's in. It's, it's like so much better. I, I I don't even have words. To, I could not compare those two books. This is an amazing book, and crito is an amazing book. Okay, uh, crito is one of the best Plato's from uh, Plato's from Plato. <laughs> it's one of the best dialogues from Plato. But um, but um, I mean. This book is something else. It's just so good. And it has poetry, it has prose, it has philosophical reflections, it has dialogue. It has everything, honestly. It has everything. It's, it's amazing. You have to read Boethius, The Consolations of Philosophy. Don't be fooled by its uh, self-help-like title that makes it sound like something that you should be away from, skip away from. It's not. It's, it's, uh, it's philosophy, it's poetry, it's everything. Um, number four. I'm just going to say the title. I'm just going to say, number four is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And you should read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And you should read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Uh, of course, you probably have read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Then you, like me, should reread Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Number three. Uh, number three is Narrative of the Life of Freddie Douglas. And this is one of my favorite books ever. This book is amazing. It's not just historically relevant and about the themes of slavery and everything, um, which it is, uh, but that, you know, 12, 12, 12 years a slave uh, is, um, is also um, 
um, a book about slavery, you know, um, it would not stand out among many other books, many other autobiographical books by uh, slaves in the in, in the American South. Um, but um, it stands out because it's so much more than that. It's a man teaching himself to read, to write, and through that, learning freedom. It is, uh, it, in many ways, it reminds me a lot of, of Frankenstein, the monster, uh, teaching himself to read and write, and through that, some in some ways, uh, also emancipating for, or learn, getting, earning the, not earning, but like acquiring the words to, to frame its own reality. Uh, but in the case of Frederick Douglass, it's like, if you need a literary hero, if I, if, if I were to have a literary hero, it would be Frederick Douglass. It's amazing. I cried with this book. I, I enjoyed this book, like, cover to cover. I honestly, like, one of these books that made you feel so much. I, and, and, and just like, damn, such a strong person, such a strong character, um, such a hard life, and such a person made to the measure of his own life and, and, and with the capacity of uh, turning it around completely against the system, against the society, against every single person who were who had an invested interest in him not being emancipated intellectually or in any way. Being able to read, being able to write is not something that anyone was encouraging him to do. Pretty much everyone was keep, trying to keep him away from anything that was not servitude. And yet, sometimes you you have a person that is irreverent to the degree that it has to be in order for them to truly, truly, truly live to their full potential and Phil Douglas did. Uh, amazing. An amazing, amazing, amazing book. Uh, number two is The Dialectic of Enlightenment. And now I feel bad for having put this book uh, before the narrative of Freddie Douglas. I don't agree. <laughs> so you can put The Dialectic of Enlightenment um, at some point between number seven and number one, but uh, not number two. I only put it here because I think I forgot about it um, because it's so recent. I was doing a read-along of it. Uh, Dialectic of Enlightenment is an amazing book. Uh, it, it gives you uh, words for many um, problems that are going on in the present. Of course, uh, many of its uh, themes and arguments are not correct and are not uh, plausible or sound, but it also does present uh, certain um, mechanisms of the mind and of, of our society that are in many ways um, poison for the human soul, for the human mind. Um, and uh, it pin, like it just takes them and it breaks them apart and it shows you um, in, in what ways, you know, the horrors of the 20th century could have been uh, maybe possible because of those forms of thinking, because of, the, of, the, of that kind of demagogy, because of that kind of um, um, consumeristic mentality that uh, no longer sees things in any other, frames things in any other way other than numbers. And uh, yeah, if you don't want to read the whole book because it, it's a bit too imposing, you can read in chapter number one, The Concept of the Enlightenment, or the chapter on the culture industry. Those are the two chapters that really contain uh, the whole, the, the real value of that book. Without those two chapters, that book wouldn't be. Uh, worth reading. Um, number one, it's my baby, it's Annie Dillard. Number one is Annie Dillard and Pilgrim at Tinker Creek is a book, it's a nature writing going through the seasons in one of her cabins. Now I know after reading The Writing Life that that's something she used to do, going into a cabin and, and, um, and uh, writing and just for that. And her husband seems to also do that. And Pilgrim at Tinker Creek is, um, is, it goes from the micro to the macro in nature. It has philosophical reflections, it has poetic prose uh, of the best kind. Um, it has, of course, uh, reflections on nature and, um, and on the natural world. It has everything. It has my three, my three favorite things in the world, which are that. Uh, poetry, philosophy, and nature. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Uh, that book is amazing. It's, um, it's, my, it's on my top three of favorite books ever, probably. It's probably, it's probably on my top three of favorite books I've ever read. Uh, it's definitely in the top five, 100% in the top five. 
but um yeah i mean I, honestly i i like it so much that i am in the process of um seriously seriously sitting down and sending a few emails to spanish publishers first they have to completely confirm that it hasn't been translated into spanish if this book has not been translated into spanish i i'm i'm probably gonna attempt um a translation uh, so that uh, people can read also the spanish language also because i feel like it's exactly the kind of book that i could uh, translate well there are other books that i love that i just don't think that i would be able to translate uh, as well but um and honestly pleading and tiger creek is like this couldn't this couldn't be better it's perfect it's a perfect book um and i am gonna this is not an honorary mention this is a question mark i don't remember when i read Moby Dick. i don't remember if it was 2022 or if it was um 2023 because it was i remember it was either december or january or something like that if i read Moby Dick this year then um, and pili and, uh, and was number um one so the mobility would be number zero mobility would be number one mobility would be mobility is an is incredible mobility is is um is the best book i have ever read mobility is my favorite book of all time probably and i some a book that i'm gonna be rereading this year um probably along with um the channel of uh, sailing through books who's also the, her favorite book and um yeah, I, I, can, I mean, it's Moby Dick. I don't think anyone needs me to convince them. Although I have uh, heard that it has bad, uh, like many people say that it has bad uh, reviews from people. Like people talk bad about Moby Dick. I guess, I, I, I guess I can understand why. I feel like you, you have to have an open mind to read Moby Dick and to like indulge in all the digressions. Uh, Melville didn't, never made a digression that he didn't like. Uh, but, um, uh, it's amazing. I I am not even. Uh, I'll make a video about Moby a proper video, not like the one I made last time, uh, when I I have read it. And that is all. This is the ten best books of twenty twenty three. You need go nowhere else. Take your time now. Grab a Kindle and 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 move forward in in time. Don't grab a old physical book like me. Uh, and, uh, and search for every single one of these books and read them all if you haven't. Of course, you probably have because I'm an ignorant bastard and you are not. But if um, if you have not read uh, these books, you should. Especially this top 10. The previous 20 as well. But this top 10 is something else. And that being said, I will see you on the other side. Please let me know about your opinions on my takes on every single one of these books. And uh, if you have made a top, also let me know because I have searched for individual people's tops. But there's always one that I miss. And I love th this is my favorite time of the year when it comes to booktube. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Thank you.